number four. I'll go for it from left to right. That's the panel, as you see it, it's a physical reputation of the panel. Mm -hmm. Plan view, so the plan view is obviously, these are all the connections that are all on top, so it's, the idea is it's exactly how the panel is. If you, you should go up to be able to find that, you should be able to see what that is, and you should be able to cross-reference it with the legends down here. So, what we do first along here is your ring main unit, so your HV is coming in here, you've got your buzz bar bridge there, which comes along here, goes down into your LV breaker, and you can see the line there, it actually says buzz bar line there, so you can see the power flow line of the actual buzz bar. Um, the breaker references A1, that's breaker A1 mains incomer. If you follow that A1 to your references up here, you've got a complete listing of what it should be, and then this information is given to us by the consultants i.e. the Micrologic Trip Unit settings, it's got all of them listed there. That might differ, because someone at some, some point might have come in and changed that, so that might be a little bit slightly Ooh, different. So yeah, don't, yeah. don't look at that and think, oh, that's, that's different, that, that needs, that's an alarm, but it's not. It could be that it's been changed at a later date. So, for instance, A1, 2,500 rated breaker. TPNN is a three-phase and neutral, which basically means it's a three-pole breaker, and then it's got a neutral link down there. Again, when I, when I get there, I'll show you that. Yeah. Uh, and that is different from A4, which is a four pole breaker. So that has got no neutral link in it. So I'll show you the difference between the two breakers. Not much difference in the operation of the breakers, mm -hmm. but it's just there's a neutral link and one's three pole and one's four pole. Um, Micrologic 5.0e, that is the trip unit, that's a little Micrologic trip unit that sits inside the breaker. Now there's difference between a 5e and a 5a, one is an ammeter, one is an energy meter, so the 5e just gives you a little bit more information in terms of network access and stuff like that. Mm. Um, the Micrologic 5.2e's you will find in these breakers here, I don't know if you've ever opened them up and seen one, it's like a little digital display which goes onto a Modbus ring, the Modbus ring goes onto the HMI and you can access all of the information. So it's kind of like a meter, but sits within the breaker. Right. <clears throat> That's kind of what the E stands for, it kind of an energy meter, it gives you all of them values, it saves you putting a meter in. And they cost a lot more money, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, your braking capacity there, withdrawable, fixed, plug-in. Most of them are plug-in. Again, that, that will be obvious when you come to the break, whether it's withdrawable or not, because it'll have a handle and whatnot. <coughs> and then whether the device is an auto ACB, if it's an auto, it will have a Micrologic and have them settings. If it's a non-auto, then it won't have anything. So non-auto will be A2, which is your, um, your generator breaker there. So I'll show you the difference between them when we go around there. And then again, it just carries on and goes, gives you a complete list of everything that's on there. Schneider NW25H1. What that means is it's an NW model, 25 means it's 2,500 amps, H1 is its um, interrupt rating, so it's the speed at which it can interrupt a fault. So again, that's to do with a Micrologic, and then a HF is something like that, which is just an isolator, it has no trip settings on it, 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 will just, oh, it, will just, it won't go until it gets to 50,000 amps. Um, and then that's the references there. They should reflect the actual wording on the door. So that should be, that should reflect Oh, that. the legend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right, so if you can see from your general schematic coming in here, you've got your ring main unit, so two HV supplies coming in here. HV breaker there, which is there. Transformer, cast resin 2.2 MVA, cast resin transformer is there. Goes through to here. Phase indication, restricted air fault. Uh, what is SI? Supply indication LEDs, which is exactly the same. The only difference is the supply indication lamps, it goes to a supply indication lamp, but it's basically it's there for the phase failure relay. So although it says uh, supply indication lamps, it's mainly there for the for the phase failure. Mm. And then that CO, that little link in there, CO is the changeover system. So I shall go through all of that with you when we get down there. Um, has, has, has anybody done the changeover with you yet? Has a generator guy has been and done their training yet? Or no, not yet. Oh, okay. So that's something you'll get to see anyway. Not yet. And to be honest, that's it. The, mo the rest of it, I'll actually go for all of these individual bits when we get to the, to the panel. I can I can point at that, but it's not going to mean anything yeah. until you sit in there. We can have a little toggle through and we'll, we'll play with it. And then how that ties in with these, again, if we go to the panel, and then I'll go through it down there. So... Oh, yeah. Are you quite comfortable with these? It, it, it's yeah. pretty self-explanatory to me, but obviously if there's anything you've got a query on... No, I mean, 
and obviously, as you say, when we get down there, it'll be a lot better to look at. Yeah. Because they're going to be slightly different compared to the ones we They are accurate. We keep them as accurate as we can, so it is ideally an exact physical representation of the panel. You should see that when we get down there. So. Yeah, because when on, on these ones over here, we've got like the common generator um, breakers and yes, where they swap them over and stuff like that on the and we've got like a bank of uh, where the UPS is going and stuff like that. Yeah, okay. That's different now, isn't it? So it's slightly different. Yeah, they changed it from the last phase, didn't they? Yeah, it's all into one now. Yeah, all yeah. oh, the uh, there's no individual breakers for the UPSs, is it? They're just like one U two UPSs, isn't it? Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, you have got different systems here. I know that. Yeah, right, like if we can go down to, to the panel, we can continue. Transformer, transformer, LB coming out to the bridge. Coming in, coming down, coming up, down into the LB mains incomer, which is something logic is this reset button. The only thing that can trip that reset button is this micro logic. So if that comes out, there's been a fault on the board and that will prevent any change, that prevent that breaker ever closing. So if any changeovers take place, mains are available again, it still won't close this board because it sees it's a fault. That's the only time that that will come out. You just push it in and it will reset it. Um, moving up, talking about tripping this breaker, the restricted earth fault. Now what that will do is it will give you protection between the transformer and the top of this breaker, or rather the CTs of the breaker. So if there's earth leakage anywhere between the transformer and this mains incomer, it will be sensed by the restricted earth fault relay. If it's any further down, it doesn't matter because it will see the current go through the CTs here, but also see it come back through the CTs through the neutral earth link. So if there's a fault between the transformer and there, it's picked up by the restricted earth fault and it's set to 10%, which is 2,500 amps, so at 250 amps, 250 amp earth leakage, that will drop. When that drops, that will in turn take that out, so that will drop. And then when that drops, that will take out your uh, ring main unit, mm -hmm. which will then in turn take out this. And that's, that's your inter-tripping signal right there. Yeah. <laughs> You've done that, yeah. I've done that one. <laughs> yeah. So you know all about the inter-tripping. These ones are pretty obvious. Mains available, mains on load. That mains on load purely comes from this breaker being on. It doesn't know that it's on load, it's not the other side, it's just a signal from that. So when it's got that available and that's closed, that light comes on. Fault light, the fault light comes on when that CEO comes into any, any sort of failure. So for instance, if we had a mains failure, call for generators, generators didn't come on, after two minutes it's going to generate a fade to fail to start, that fault light would come on. Again, if that fuse went to that controller, that fault light would come on. Any time that that fault light comes on, you get an alarm up there so your BMS will know about it, so you'll know that the ZDO is, is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. You're unprotected basically. Uh, whilst we're in here, battery back up. The battery backs up all of your protection. So it backs up this system here and this system here. And the temperature relay here, pretty obvious, core one, core two, core three, core four is turned off because we don't have a fourth core. Mm -hmm. And there are the settings. Your settings are, I believe, 90 degrees for an alarm and 119 degrees for a trip. I shouldn't really, in theory, go anywhere near them. Uh, PLC, that's what does all your monitoring of all the breakers. Uh, base failure relay. Base failure relay again relies on the incoming side of this breaker. So if that if that was in the fault, basically, if you lost mains, that would see it, that would go off, that would start that off, send your generator start signal, generators will come on and confirm. Ready? On your generators, dual fed generators, so you've got two supplies coming in and it goes down to a parallel bar and it goes onto this connection here. And this is your generator breaker. This breaker, like I said, is different because it's an NW25HF. No trip unit. There's nothing that will trip that in the event of a fault. However, the other end of the generator, they will have a breaker just like that with a trip unit on it. So if there's any fault, it gets picked up at, the, at that end. So it protects that cable. Mm -hmm. and then and then you, would that be a trip for you? No. No, because all we get is a generator failure with the ZDO. Right. We wouldn't know about it. The only other line that you get is you get a BMS signal from the generator. Yeah, it's, it's nothing to do with this panel. We're not picking that signal up. Right. ESP, which 
which is there. Not an external one, so it's there. You've got L1, L2, L3, and L4. And that bit left up that says obviously it's got green light, this helps you, you've got full protection. There's another little red light next to the green light. If the red light and the green light come on, it means it's seen a little bit of a spike and you've got a little bit of a loss of protection just on that phase. So that's the time to call us and we're coming to replace the unit. So red and green. You've got a loss of protection. If it's red, you've got no protection. And if the neutral blinking means the neutral earth fault. Yeah. It literally it takes yeah. If there's a big, if there's a large spike in voltage, that will suck it up rather than basically kill the rest of the panel. So transfer mode, auto, as I'm sure you're aware, in auto. Lots of mains will open the mains breaker, pull through the generators, generators will start, generators will confirm, we get confirmation at the ZDO, generator breaker will close, you're then supported on generator. Generators go off, or while the mains becomes available again, your ZDO is set to five minutes proving, so after five minutes it will count down, because you might go in and out, might come back on, go back off, so after five minutes, if it's been stable for five minutes, it will drop the generator breaker and we close that breaker within five seconds. The difference is if I put it to auto manual, uh, get mains failure, mains breaker opens, start the generator, generator is confirmed, generator breaker closes, supported on generator. Mains then returns, five minutes proves, but nothing will happen. It won't automatically reclose. You'll then have to just manually click it either into auto or click it into reset and it will reset the ZDO and then it will close. Basically so that you guys have to come and reset it at the panel rather than it just doing it by itself. Now this is a maintenance bypass, UPS maintenance bypass. I'm not going to go through the procedure because I know that Soccer Mecca are going to go through it with you. But basically what happens is you have a maintenance bypass here, you have a static bypass over at UPS's. When he puts it into static bypass, you can parallel the main supply. Because static is the main supply and this is the main supply. You power them up, give you the key, key will go into there, you can then parallel them up go and turn the UPSs off and you've not lost the mains. But I do know that he's going to do that. And then this supplies the essential panel, which is just around the back, and we should go there in two seconds. What you'll find in here, most sections will have a thermostat. So that thermostat is probably won't use it so much now, but if it's very, very cold, there's little heaters in every single section. So if you wanted to keep the panel at 30 degrees, turn it to 30 degrees, when it drops below 30 degrees, the little thermostat heaters will keep it. Go and try little things, but you know, just so keep it. So just anti-condensation? Yes, exactly, anti-condensation. It stops you getting a very good start. Yeah, they all go from the start, yeah, but they're, they're, they're not the way as well. because they're normally always damp mm -hmm. when they're delivered. We should do it the opposite way as well. Once it gets back up to 30, well, it yes. turns yeah, itself yeah, off. Yes, it will kill itself off, yeah. Uh, this goes to modules, harmonic filter, which I haven't got installed yet, because that's the future. This one is of interest. This, this goes to your mechanical UPS, which is a little wall mounted mechanical UPS, and then that goes off to the critical panel. So on this system, you have a central panel and a critical panel. That breaker down there does the essential panel. That one will go to a UPS and do the critical panel. So it's basically UPS backed. And then these are your generator auxiliaries then the UPS module, so you've got UPS 1, UPS 2, UPS 3 in here. Transformer comes in here, our LV supply comes down to here, mains breaker, restricted earth fault, that arrow just means it's a back trip, so it means it's going to back trip that transformer. Common bar going all the way along here, uh, we've got the supply that I was just telling you about, it's this one here, that supply there, that board there is the mechanical UPS board, that then supplies the critical panel here, so that's the whole of the critical panel. And you've got an A stream and a B stream, i.e. A and B over there. And again, you've got likewise going up to there, so that's that panel there. You've also got that there. Is your feed to, so that's the, the NSX breaker with the rotary handle. That is your direct supply to the essential panel. So the difference between that panel there and that panel there is that's mechanically fed by the UPSs and that panel isn't. So if you get a mains failure, that will go over to its alternative supply. That one, in reality, won't really see the loss of supply unless you kill the UPS. 
Um, and then there's your UPS feeders, and then there's a wraparound bypass. Again, that indicates there's a Castell there. The Castell, so that's all your UPSs. Um, that's pretty much everything on that. If we, this panel here, which is this panel here, so a central panel, they're colour coded, yellow, blue, and they pretty much are what they say. All the controls are down there, all the BMS, all the external connections are all made in there. So, example, if I killed that A supply there, A lights on, A lights on, you can see the whole panel's on A. It's all that would happen is, so after three seconds, all of the lamps will go bang, 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 bang. They'll all go over to B, so it'll just flick over. But, you'll have a three second loss, so there'll be a delay. The critical panel, you won't see any, any loss. And we go to metering. We've got the package sub, which is this package sub. UPS output, which is the UPS output panel over there. Uh, main ion 75 meter is... Where? That's that meter there. So that meter there is, is basically the top of the boss. It's on the supply side, so either generator or mains will do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So every value that you see on there is replicated in here. But you, again, you can access this from our head end system. Circuit overview. Follow it through, again UPS output. Yeah, that's all right. Temperatures, that's the actual temperatures within. You can set the temperature set point. So if you set the temperature set point for 40 degrees, when it gets to 40 degrees, it will give you an alarm and it will let you know what the temperature is. Yeah. Active alarms will just be the doors, which it is, all the doors that are open. So any active alarm, come onto there, you can come along and acknowledge it, you can acknowledge it from the head end as well. Alarm config, which will, you can choose whether or not it's a critical alarm or non-critical alarm. So, if an ACB is withdrawn, is it critical, is it non-critical? It's down to you guys, it's up to you to decide. Because all you've got to do is press it like that, and it will toggle across, and then it will give you either non-critical or critical alarm, depending on your preference. And then DFU distribution, these are the two panels. So that DFU essential panel, if I go onto it, I can then go to all the, all the outgoing ways. But absolutely every outgoing way is monitored. They're all off at the moment, but if you go to user ID, you can write in whatever you want. So whatever. Yeah. If you're in a co-location, for instance, like you were saying the other day, if you had BT in one area, um, O2 in another area, just put in O2, circuit, blah, blah, blah. Just literally type whatever you want. Enter, that comes into there. What parameters are you monitoring on that? What you monitor? What's that? On the, on the outputs, what are you monitoring? Just load or? Yeah, we're monitoring, we're monitoring voltage, current, and you get, obviously from that you can get kilowatts and KBA, kilowatt hours, so you've got a total right. kilowatt hours reading down there. That's it, it's not going to give you anything like what you're going to get from an iron meter, but for metering purposes, to billion purposes essentially, you've got the information that you need on there. And that button's called red, don't they, man? Yeah, that's it, when it goes over, when it goes over low, so you've got minimum maximum, so if I go to a minimum, I set the minimum to zero. I won't change it because it's going to alarm, and then you have to put load on it to clear it. But if you go on to maximum of 32, so if someone's drawing more than 32 amps, like you said, that will go red, that will flash, and that will be that will just pop up in there as an over over um, over current alarm. There's a log on. If you want to set anything, so if you want to set any set points or anything like that, login is one, two, three, four. Close. Uh, from in there, you can you can set you can do that from there. But if you go to there, you can then go to give you distribution. So someone must have logged into one, two, three, four before, because otherwise you can't click in there. I shall prove that. So if I go into seven two zero one, which margins engineering, this is us. We go in, we've got margins engineering. We have an engineering page where we can change all of this quite a lot we can change. You, shouldn't, you don't really need to be worried about that. But if I then go into here, I can't then change anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have to be logged in as one, two, three, four. If you log in as one, two, three, four, you can then go to your distribution and then you can you can change your parameters basically. Mm -hmm. Is that the only code we need to know? What number do you call? No, it's not the only code we need to know. Yes. One, two, three, four. What about changing the code? 
of the key to put it in manual bypass but I'm sure you've done it so many times and the soccer mech guy will go through it yeah. he's got to put it in static bypass not something I'm sure we'll get it there I'll yeah, you I'll do do it. It. if you do go and force the key out as I'm sure you're aware you'll take all of the UPSs out the contacts on the back and it will shunt all of the UPSs out you can't you can't I wasn't aware you could get it out you can get it out you can put it in you, I shouldn't really tell you 